For the triceps, we actually have study that shows that overhead tricep extensions stimulate significantly more muscle growth than pushdowns, um, which is what I've very long advocated. And so it's great to see that we now actually have research that validates these principles. For the biceps, we also have a few studies. We know that chin-ups and even wide grip pull-downs, according to one study, are as effective as, I think, barbell or dumbbell curls. I can't remember which one. I think they're barbell curls. In contrast, we also have a study that found that dumbbell rows are considerably less effective, like half as effective as biceps curls. That makes sense because one thing that the biceps and the triceps have in common is that with barbells or fixed implements, they can be a lot more effective due to horizontal force production. If during a wide grip pull-down, you can move the biceps, you can exert force of pulling the bar inwards. And because if you're pulling the bar inwards, the, the bar is fixed. You're not going to crush the bar unless you're the mountain. So what happens is you pull the weight down. Like that force essentially gets transferred into downward movement. It's, biomechanically, it's a little bit more complicated, but that's intuitively how you can think about it. And the same for a bench press. If you're pressing outward on the bar, since the bar can't bend, that pushes the bar up. Based on these things, you can, with a fixed implement, activate the arms a lot more than with a dumbbell or a single cable. So with a dumbbell row, there, there really isn't that much, you cannot have that horizontal force production and because you, you would move the dumbbell out to the side because it is not fixed in place. And you also don't have a lot of direct demand for elbow flexion. Like the, there's no elbow extension torque from the weight, pretty much, especially as long as the dumbbell is directly below the elbow, you know, there's no direct demand to the biceps. So it's yeah, just not a great exercise for the biceps. Chin-ups, probably, yes, I would count them 100%. So based on this research, rows and stuff are like 50%. And then you get to something like high rows or face pulls. I mean, if you want to be precise, probably that would be like 25% because it, it still activates the biceps. But I think often you can just ignore it for the sake of simplicity. Maybe you, because if you don't cross a certain threshold, I think it's like 40% of MVIC in EMG research, the, the stimulus is essentially too low to stimulate significant muscle growth. So you, can, you don't have to worry about an exercise stimulating 10% versus 20%, you know. Probably based on that, if it's below 40% or below half, you can kind of round it to zero. So, yeah, and then of course all the curls count 100%. The tricky thing is, like with the triceps, we know that overhead tricep extensions are a lot more effective than pushdowns, but they, they both really train the triceps well. So you, you kind of also have to worry about the muscle length, right? So something like a preacher curl or a Bayesian curl is probably a lot more effective than a dumbbell curl. But are you actually going to count the dumbbell curl as 80% or something in a program? You know, then you have to make a lot of assumptions and it gets very complicated. So typically I, I count an exercise as fully or half and I make sure that you tick all the boxes for a muscle. That's most important. 